Namaste. Good morning. Namaste. Welcome. Amazing to be together. I hope you're feeling fresh. And surely this practice, reflecting on our deep personhood and the vitalities that are governing our body and mind will evoke that freshness in you. And we'll start by creating that collective atmosphere of love by chanting the mantra. We'll chant Om together three times. I invite you to join me in that and begin in that prayerful way. So wherever you're at, just get comfortable in your seat. Perhaps gently closing the eyes. We'll start with that most auspicious sound, Om, the great purifier. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Obhunaktu Sahaviryan Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Mavit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Ganana Hamtwa Ganapati Gumavamehi Kavim Gavi Namupamashravastamam Chesh Tarajam Brahmanam Brahmanaspata Anashranam Uti Bhisi the Sadhanam Om Shri Maha Ganapata Ye Namaha Hari Om Shiva Shakti Ayukto Yadi Bhavati Shakta Prabhavidum Nache Devam Devo Nakalukujalas Panditumapi Atastwa Maradhyam Hari Haravarin Chari Pirapi Pranantum stotum va katamakrata punyaf prabhavati. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. Peace be, peace be, peace be. May we discover that peace within that passeth all understanding, the peace of the inner light. And as we discover that, may that inner light radiate out. And may that light purify the world. Hariyum. So we're taking up the last four factors in what's known as Vyahrati Upasana. So in these previous sessions, we were reflecting upon the cosmos, Saguna Brahman, in four different factors. But first we're concerned with the day. Then we reflected upon the night. And then the last session was on culture. These concluding four factors 
are on you, <laughs> the person who's experiencing day, night, and culture. What's really interesting about this is the Rishi Mahachamasya, who we have to thank for this revelation, discovering these factors for us to even alight our minds upon. Here, the Rishi envisages you as a bundle of energies. So here we're going to reflect on the vitality in you, also known as the prana. But here prana means the different winds that we experience quite intimately in the body. So those sacred syllables, buhu, buvaha, suvaha, mahaha, we were, we were looking at those. Here the buhu is prana. Prana here means what you ingest. It definitely is correlated to the very subtle breath that is dancing in your nostrils, your in and out breath, the feeling of touch at the base of the nostrils, how that rises up through the forehead center as you exhale, how it extends 12 fingers beyond to that space, your personal bubble. So we'll touch upon that, connect with it, but it also relates to how you consume, how you're processing your life what you're taking in through the five senses. Could be what you're ingesting, the food that you eat, but also what you see and hear that plays a huge part of making up our world. So buhu, prana. Then buhuvaha is apana. Apana means that wind or vitality that's moving down. Everything's moving out. Physically, this relates to our elimination, what we eat that doesn't have any nutritional value or substance that can be eliminated, the waste matter. But you can also think of this function in different ways, like the menstruation cycle or the seminal fluid. So these are different ways of how that force is operating in our life. Psychologically too, it means our ability to let go. Do we have mastery over that? <laughs> a bad memory, can we just let it go? Can we breathe it out? <laughs> That's a part of apana. So buhu, buvaha. Suvaha is the vyana. What we're consuming, which gets assimilated in the body, whether it's through the senses, like something we watch, or whether it's what we eat, that also is circulated and energizing and getting distributed to the different parts of our body. So suvaha means the vyana function, that ability that spreads out from the heart all the way to the edge of our skin. Now, uh, psychologically too, on the mental landscape, Vyana is also responsible for the movement of our thoughts. Can our mind be refreshed, re-energized, and move freely through the space? That free moving mind we want to invoke versus getting stuck and ruminating on something. So what's really interesting here, and it might sound a little bit... Um, not as exciting as you might expect, but I'll explain it. Here, the fourth, that transcendental aspect, mahaha, that's, that's supporting these pranas, the rishi says is food. <laughs> Anam. It's food that's nurturing all these uh, pranas. That's interesting. So I thought I'd bring an example to describe that. Another example we find in Upanishad it happens to be Chandogya Upanishad. There's a boy, uh, Shweta Ketu, in this Upanishad, and he's mastered three Vedas. That's so many mantras. But his father, in this deep spiritual dialogue he's having, his father says, hey, your mind is nothing but a modified food. So there's a doubt about that. How is that possible? So what he does is he goes on an experimentation. He says, okay, here's what you do. You don't consume food for 15 days. That's interesting, because there's 15 cycles in the moon. So he said 15 days, no food, just a little water, you know, keeping the body and soul together. <laughs> so this little boy goes on that fast for 15 days. At the end of that experiment, his father says, now recite these Vedas that you've mastered. He can't do it. <laughs> he can't even bring out a word. So therefore, the conclusion in that is that the Vedas are nothing but a modified Anam, food. <laughs> so what you eat, whether it's through the senses or 
Also to really importantly, what you're consuming, the food that you eat is really important. And there's a lot of factors in that, the specialness with what, with how you cook it, the ingredients in it, fresh vegetables and fruits, grains, then also the attitude. And then this vitality, this prana, that's helping digest that. So, anam. so in this meditation, what we're going to do is get really intimate and familiar with these with these vital forces that are governing our lives and um, and reflect upon that consuming force on them, how it's getting distributed throughout the body and uh, enjoy being an observer to these functions. So with prana and apana, I'm going to have us sort of build those energies, nurture that force of, of ingestion, and then also that force that allows us to release tension. But then when it comes to Viana, how that gets distributed, we're going to really take a back seat and then just observe. And I'll, I'll get, direct our attention to that appropriately. So let us get to it. First, we're going to create that space at the physical level with a, a few warm-up exercises. Let's take in a deep breath. We'll breathe in that pranic aspect into the nose. Fill the whole body up with breath as you raise the shoulders up. As you draw them back, we'll gently begin to open the mouth ah, and let the breath slide down the body. Let's try that three times. Deep in-breath. Ah. Sighing the breath out as the shoulders relax down. Great. Then we're going to open up the head and neck by taking the chin to the chest. You can spend a moment there before slowly lifting the chin and then letting the weight of the head fall back as the chin and throat open. Try that a few times. Here, what's interesting is as you do that movement, the rest of your body can be relaxed. Try to just isolate that portion, meaning that you're not clenching the toes. You feel stable in your seat. Your shoulders are still relaxed as we let them settle. You're just drawing the chin to the chest, lifting it and opening up that throat space. Then we'll also take our head on it all the way to the right, twisting side to side. You can experiment pulling the facial muscles also in that direction, gently, allowing them to release as you center your gaze forward and then all the way to the left. Hmm. We'll take our head side to side, the right ear to the right shoulder. I like to spend three to five breaths there. Back to center, left ear to the left shoulder. Great. Now we'll be practicing our Tadaka Mudra, just a great overall upper body exercise, getting the blood circulating too through the arms. So what we do is we take in a big breath as we reach up, interlace the fingers, and then rotate those palms upward to the sky. And as you do this, I encourage you to also get connected with your base. So feeling your feet in the base of your body on the mat, taking a few deep breaths into the belly.
And then exhaling as you release, slowly lengthening it down all the way through the fingertips, which feels great. Then working on opening up these different channels on each side of the body, we're gonna just lift our left arm all the way up. And then as we breathe out, we're just going to slightly bend over to the right. Here, just try to focus on the trunk of the body and arm bending and keep, um, keep your attention here. Again, focused at the navel, that way that your weight is still balanced, kept underside. A few breaths here, and then inhale as you come back up, and then exhale, release the arm down. And switch sides, inhaling with the right arm up this time. Full breath out as you slightly bend to the left. Always very purifying to breathe into those tight spaces. You're just sending a fresh supply of blood and energy to those compressed places, keeping your organs healthy. Enabling a smooth digestion for that apana vayu is strong. And then inhale, reach up, exhale, lower down. And lastly, before we come into our uh, asana siddhi get established in our seat what we're going to do is just a simple twist so i place my left hand on the right knee and reach all the way up to the right and then exhale twist to the right again breathing into that space inhaling as i come back to center and switching sides. A big breath all the way up to the left. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center. These exercises, those seemingly simple, go a long way in creating that truly comforting seat where we have no problem spending the next 45 minutes together where our physical body comes down and the subtle world opens up, the subtle world of these winds. So make any necessary preparation to come into that seat, your Sukhasana, where the feet are firmly placed on the floor, where you have the maximum base like a pyramid. And also necessary to let the hands rest softly on the knees or on the lap. And what you do is give yourself permission, maybe even in a wordless way, that in the next 45 minutes, I'm committing myself to looking within, to alighting my mind to the inner light. Which is nourishing and going to enrich the rest of my life. So I can currently suspend all my problems and worries, free my mind from that, keep it outside. And when you're ready, gently begin to close your eyes. The inward journey. You feel a soft lift from the crown of the head. Without losing your sense of support below.
begin to observe the sounds in your space. Activate, activate that ability to listen to what's around you. It could be the sound of the traffic passing by, the sound of your family members in the home, or even a little deeper, the sound of your breath. Special listening. Treat that sound not as a distraction, but you're just following the different sounds that arise around you. Effortlessly tracking each sound that rises. This in itself is a complete meditation. Freeing the mind from the inner chatter of dissipating thought and simply listening to what is. And as you draw your attention nearer, you feel that sound merge into the vibration that's surrounding your body. You feel the aliveness of touch. From the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Begin to feel your body in the space. There may be one place in your body that you feel stronger. Even if it's an ache or pain, we don't see it as a distraction. You could rather look at it as a gateway into the inner life. So you observe and include that sensation. Instead of creating an inner dialogue around it, rather track the moment to moment unfolding that it's revealing. Feel your body.
Your body is the expression of mind. So when the body becomes still and relaxed, mind begins to open up. And mind is a modified food, a num. We'll, click, we'll quickly begin to shift our attention through the different parts of our body, allowing our mind to flow freely, to bring the light of awareness to every part. And as we do that, we're also healing our body. That light is the greatest healer. See if you can notice your right foot. Then your left foot. Then your right leg. guiding your attention up from the ankle, calf muscle, knee, thigh, and hip. Then your left leg, rising up from the ankle, calf muscle, knee, thigh, and hip. Then observe the whole base of your body. Feel that your physical body extends below the mat. Or if you're on the chair that your feet have a connection below the floor. Like the body is a vibrant tree. the shoots above and the roots below. You feel still. And as you nurture that stillness with even more Detail, you can observe the whole back side of the body. The lower, mid, and upper back. Then you observe the front of the body. From the base up, the lower abdomen and navel, the upper abdomen
the softening of the solar plexus region. The breasts and the heart center between. A fully open chest. Relaxed. Leading all the way up to the shoulders. Then observe the whole right arm. From the right shoulder down through the upper arm, elbow, wrist, hand, fingers, to the tips of your fingers. Leading back up through the fingers, hand, wrist, elbow, upper arm, shoulder. Then the left arm, the left shoulder, upper arm, elbow, wrist, hand, fingers, tips of the fingers. Guiding up back through the fingers, hand, wrist, elbow, upper arm, and shoulder. Then explore the region of the throat. Leading up to the neck chin and jaws, the lips gently closed, the tongue resting in the inner space, the cheeks, base of the nostrils, leading up to the eyes. Beginning to enjoy the presence of the inner light. The eyebrows and eyebrow center. ears, the whole region of the forehead, and the top of the head. Be aware of your whole body. See your whole body in one vision. Seated upright in the asana. The spinal column, like a shaft of light. And your body is a mediator between the earth and sky.
you'll find that when the body becomes situated in this asana, you experience angalakavam. You may even feel physically that you're not there. Body becomes so light. Though you're fully capable of moving You're enjoying that fixidity in the asana. Body's stable, yet so light. That's when mind is easily able to observe the flow of breath. Start to notice your spontaneous, natural breath. The feeling of the breath dancing in this light body. And as you deepen your attention to follow the breath, ever so gently track the movement that you feel as you exhale. Perhaps a conscious exhale, breathing out all the way and feel the breath as it leaves the base of the nostrils and moves out into the space in front of your body. Try to follow that movement. And then ever so naturally, you draw it back as you breathe in and feel the touch of the breath, grace the nostrils and rise up through the corner of the eyes, the eyebrow center, pulled up all the way into the forehead. And then follow that breath's movement as you exhale down. With special attention at the base of the nostrils. Exhaling, feeling the breath move past the physical body. Inhaling from that space up where the breath caresses the forehead center. Here we're uniting our mind with Prana, Buhu, refining our sense perception. The clarity with which we perceive the world. You may experience some distraction in the form of memories bubbling up. 
the mind moving to different thoughts. The mind moves, that's okay. Let it enjoy connecting with this movement of the breath, guiding it to follow that touch as you breathe out and the breath extends beyond the physical. And you draw from that space up to feel the breath rest in the mental space at the center of the forehead. The water element that we take refines itself to become the prana. And the earth element that we consume refines itself to be the mind. Here we're nurturing that relationship between the prana and the mind breathing back and forth. Between the nostrils and the forehead center. When the mind enjoys that inner luminosity, then we no longer indulge or overconsume. We start to revel in that aesthetic pleasure. The more sustainable pleasure just by watching, by observing things. Now begin to take this breath, that feeling of pulsation at the forehead, that touch of breath. And on your next inhalation, draw that breath down. Feeling the breath as you inhale from the forehead center, get drawn all the way down to the base of your body. And then as you exhale, feeling that breath, remove any sense of stuckness. Negativity, harmful thinking patterns. You breathe in and let the breath be drawn down to the base. Like you're bringing light to the base of your body. And whatever's drawn there, you let it go. This is the space where Bhuvaha or the Apanavayu functions the space of elimination. You can draw the worries, the frustrations, the unfulfilled desires, the bad memories in with the breath. And then let them go with the breath. If you feel comfortable for, with this pranayama, you can also inhale and pause. 
building the energy up in that space at the base of the body. And then let it go. Whatever we consume through the prana vayu has to become refined into a subtle essence, which becomes our body and mind. But apana helps remove what's not necessary through the water element that first becomes the urine, the earth element, the feces. And for the yogis, the subtlest trace is our unhappiness. Let that thought go and be joyful. Then begin to notice the region of your heart, gently placing down the conscious exhalation and inhalation. Come back to being an observer of your breath. Prana ikranam. You're just watching the breath but with special attention at the heart. This is the region of Vyana, Suvaha. Vyana is that free flowing movement and circulation that distributes what we consume throughout the whole body and mind. Let the heart be expansive. As you watch the breath dance in that space, moving all the way out to the tingling at the edge of the skin. And as you watch that space, you can begin to visualize a flame of light in that space. In that supreme teaching of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I am that luminosity within you. I live in your heart. Aham Vaishvana Rabhutva, Rani Nam Deha Mashritaha, Prana Apana Samayuktaha, Acham Yamnam Chaturvitam. I am that very fire that lives in your heart, governing these pranas. I am the ruler of this body and I'm ever with you. Feel him in your heart. 
as you visualize that flame. And let that burn away resentment, confusion, all the various manifestations and the root of India. And be joyful. Be happy. Lam, bam, ram, yam, ham, hum, om. Lam, bam, ram, yam, ham, hum, om. Lam, bam, ram, yam. Hum, hum, hum. Lam, bam, ram, yam, hum, hum, hum. Lam, bam, ram, yam, hum, hum, hum. Lam, bam, ram. Yam ham hum ho Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho Lam bam ram yam ham Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho. Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho. Lam bam ram yam. Ham hum ho. Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho. Lam bam ram yam ham hum ho. Lam bam ram. Yam ham hum ho hum 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 Feel God in your heart, radiating out. Radiating through the mind. Radiating through the senses. Radiating through your body. Radiating out into your space.
अहम वैश्वान प्राणि नाम देहम आश्रित प्राणापान सयुक्त I live in your heart as the fire. It's governing this body. It's governing the pranas. And keeping the eyes closed, gently bring your hands to that region of the heart. As we dedicate this practice to all beings. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhatrani Pashyantu Mahakaschadukha Bhagavad Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om When you're ready, gently begin to open your eyes. Practice of meditation is complete.